The Japanese have a very interesting culture. One of my favorite parts of that culture happened to be the Japanese cuisine, including sushi. So today I'm going to be talking about where sushi came from, sushi etiquette, and how sushi made its way to America. According to Wikipedia, sushi developed first in Southeast Asia, then spread to South China before its introduction to Japan. Originally, sushi was made from raw fish, which was put into fermenting rice, and the fermenting rice broke down the fish into amino acids. The amino acids preserved the fish and gave it a long shelf life. After the fish was ready to be eaten, the rice was discarded. But once sushi was implemented into Japan, the Japanese found that they enjoyed eating the rice so they did not throw it away. The word sushi actually came from the oldest form of sushi in Japan, which was nerizushi, shortened to the present tense sushi. The term sushi came from an old context, uh, which meant sour tasting because of the, the, the flavor that the fermenting rice gave it. Contemporary Japanese sushi was actually created in Tokyo by Nana Yayohi. It was the earliest form of fast food, and it was not eaten with chopsticks. It was actually made into rolls, which you could hold with your hand and carry. These rolls were made using wooden bamboo molds, such as this. So now that we've gone over the basic history of sushi, we're going to talk about sushi etiquette, which is a very important part of the Japanese culture. So how do you eat it? In America, we basically use the chopsticks for almost all kinds of sushi. But in Japan, normally, if you eat something such as a sashimi, you would use a chopstick. For nigiri sushi, which are these or any of the rolls, you would just use your fingers. The history of the chopstick actually came from China. They were sent from China over to Japan just as the sushi was. In Japanese culture, however, the chopsticks must be handled respectively. Originally, they were used in ceremonies to pass the ashes of loved ones. Because of the ceremony, the, the chopsticks should never be passed from one to another. You should always offer your plate, not the chopstick. Uh, do not point your chopsticks. That's considered to be very rude. And you also shouldn't rub your chopsticks together. A sushi chef will actually consider that rude as if you're saying that their chopsticks are made of a, a low grade. Leaving food on your plate is also considered to be rude. So, how did sushi actually make its way to America? The introduction of sushi to the U.S. began as Japan em emerged as a powerful economic presence in the world, and specifically to the U.S. In the 1950, most Americans that ate they knew that Japanese ate raw fish, but they had never tried it, never imagined trying it, refused to. But after this economic change, Japanese began coming to America, and in turn, businessmen went over to Japan as well. So therefore, after this exchange from Japanese to America and Americans to Japan, it began a market for sushi in America. So today, each region of J Japan still preserves its own unique taste by utilizing local products when making different kinds of sushi. So in conclusion, sushi is a very delicious part of Japanese culture, which I enjoy on a regular basis. Now we know how it became important in the culture, how, and how us Americans became lucky enough to enjoy it ourselves.